choosing between gene therapies and cell therapies and small molecule protein therapies um, on the pl pluses and minuses, a uh, plus side that uh, in gene therapy is thought of as being once in a life or <clears throat> for maybe for decades scale. Um, it, it, cell therapies can be extremely smart uh, in the like chemo tax and so forth, things that, that typically lipid nanoparticles and viruses don't do, virus capsids. Um, the mechanism action of nucleic acid therapies tends to be very obvious from the data in the literature. Um, while a small molecule requires kind of a voodoo round of uh, uh, just random search, um, uh, gene and cell therapies can be high, high off target if you have a big family of genes uh, that, that have very similar binding to a small molecule. They could have wildly different um, um, gene and new targeting. Anyway, and low cost is possible for both. And to point that out, uh, you may think of gene therapy as very expensive, which I did for a while. The highest uh, cost is now not 2.5 million, but 2.8 million for uh, hemoglobinopathies. But to both, uh, because the market is small, in my opinion, because if you look at uh, the top five uh, gene therapies that we just, uh, sorry, the top five vaccines for COVID that we just, uh, many of us took, um, all five of them are formulated as gene therapies, either viral capsids or um, single messenger RNAs and lipid nanoparticles. And they can be as low as $2 a dose. So 2.8 million versus two, the difference is market size. And so aging should be one of those things is high market size. So I've mentioned some of these uh, 10 pathways for aging that are fairly well understood. There's a half empty, half full aspect here. I've included cancer, which is sometimes omitted. Um, uh, but you have to get all of these right, because uh, if you get one of them right, like let's say, let's say cancer, um, you might uh, improve longevity by two years. Um, but if you get all of them right, you might get a true reversal um, and resistance to most, if not all, diseases of aging. Now, th those, those sort of hallmarks of aging each have a pathway associated with them. And some of these pathways are represented in the context of the cell where you have the extracellular components, the membrane, transmembrane, the intracellular, and the nuclear components, and then other organelles like mitochondria. And this is very well understood. And there have uh, an intervention in all of these have been uh, tackled at one point or another. Um, in particular, we've tackled the, these um, Fiberglass growth factor 21, this red arrow, blue arrow for clotho, uh, alpha clotho, and the yellow arrow for a variation on the TGF beta receptor 2. Um, in this case, we make a soluble for, form of it. Um, and so that, and then we tried every possible combination of those, including the triple combination. And this is published in PNES, uh, thanks to Noah Davidson and colleagues. Um, in my lab, uh, don't know it was a postdoc. Now he is co-founder of Rejuvenate Bio, and the um, the uh, very it's not always as simple as all three of them are the best. More is not always better, and sometimes there's some interference. And these subtleties will, um, you know, be worked out by more and more. Hopefully, worked out by more and more complicated um, genetic circuits, possibly more genes. Um, so we have a multi-gene uh, treatment of a multi-disease um, uh, endpoints. So, so for example, here is a, a, a diabetes model with insulin tolerance test. We have obesity, uh, age-related obesity um, that drops with treatment, drops down to um, uh, a stable, normal weight um, from about two times, um, quite uh, uh, monstrously um, pathologically obese. Uh, we did a, a obstruction of the uh, kidney function and heart function, and these uh, were restored to close to normal as well. And you can see the color coded the same as I've been talking about. Now, Noah Davis, as I already mentioned, is has um, 
put these combinations and others, uh, including the classic um, transcription factors, OX4, SOX2, and KLF4, um, though has been all these papers that involve AAV, uh, there's, we also have one for cytomegalovirus that I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Um, this, uh, the, the, the reason that I focused on the, the triple uh, soluble factors, factors that are released into the media, possibly systemically throughout the body, uh, that has an, a delivery advantage because the gene therapies are not perfectly delivered, although we're working on it. My lab and some of our startups are, have um, focused on uh, either altering the, the specificity of delivery or um, uh, making higher efficient systemic delivery. The So those are soluble factors released in the media uh, intercellular um, milieu. But the problem with the transcription factors is they only work in the cells that they target. There might be some indirect effects, but the the, fact, the, the genes themselves stay put um, and may even be transient. Uh, and so that that's more at the mercy of the efficient, the low of current efficiency of all the um, gene therapy vectors that I'm familiar with. Um, well, gene therapy delivery mechanisms. Now, so down below are some of the uh, not a full set, uh, nearly full set of all the disease disease models, ages of uh, age related diseases that have been accelerated in some cases. Um, and I should point out that almost all the diseases have some age component, even inherited diseases, infectious diseases. The consequences um, are age um, age related, but. We feel that if we, the more of these diseases we get um, reversed, the, the more likely we're aiming at the core pathways, ideally all 10 core pathways, but that will require additional uh, investigation. This has been done successfully in mice and published. Um, the clinical trials on dogs is looking quite good. Um, those are um, a prelude to uh, human clinical trials, which will hopefully soon start soon after that. Um, sometimes these have to be these gene therapies have to be changed subtly to be species specific, but uh, they're basically the same over and over in in in, in uh, various mammals. I'm thankful to the Peace Institute and NOAA once again. Now I, I said that in addition to the tiny uh, AV capsid, which is uh, still good enough to deliver these uh, combination therapies. Uh, there's a much larger ve vectors, which is herpes virus families. For example, this is uh, cytomegalovirus. And, uh, and in this case, not only was there uh, information on the aging reversal, which is a fast assay, we tend to focus on aging reversal rather than longevity because um, for for humans, the variation in longevity is pretty high already, and and so we don't want to go into you know multi-decade clinical trials because it would be unaffordable and possibly less uh, interpretable. But here, um, we got both uh, both the the aging reversal assays and the longevity assays in the short-lived mouse uh, or mice that are short-lived in general. Um, show, show on the far. Um, left is the is the death curve um, of the wild type untreated mice, and then on the right uh, are um, well, the two different uh, genes of interest in this PNAS paper, TERT and FST. And um, these have been noted in previous publications uh, in 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 using methods that were not exactly compatible with gene therapies uh, that we that would go into the clinic. But this, I think what we've done is much more compatible. We think our uh, collaborators have been brought together um, thanks to uh, 